The Crawfords. You know the Crawfords. Ben and Cammie Crawford, parents of six children. But wait, can you even call them parents? Now let's return for a moment to March 2018. Let's call the Crawford parents now what the internet called them then on social media. When the entire family of eight, that's right, the Crawford parents plus their six children, set out on a through hike of the entire 2,200 mile Appalachian Trail together and had the nerve, the gall, to film, edit, and post YouTube videos about their hike, which were sometimes even a little clickbaity. What did the internet call the Crawford parents back in March 2018 after seeing their videos on their YouTube channel, Fight For Together? The internet called them morally compromised fame hogs, ill-prepared as through hikers, people who obviously knew nothing about backpacking. And if the Crawford parents didn't actually end up killing their six children, it was only by God's grace. Everyone knows that grown-ass adults get lost on the trail and die every year. And those kids, think of all the ways they could have perished. Giardia, hypothermia, infected blisters. There are rattlesnakes everywhere on the trail, not to mention dangerous roots that are practically invisible and little pointy rocks for like 50 miles in Pennsylvania. Those poor children. Let's name them, why don't we? It seems the least we can do for what they had to endure at the hands of their parents, those self-centered loon balls. There was Dove, who was 17 years old at the time of the hike, and Eden, 15 years old, and Seven, who was 13, Memory, 11, Philia, 7, and Rainier, only two. That's right, Rainier, just two years old who the family carried like a prisoner in a sort of backpack carrier thing all the way from Georgia to Maine, 14 different states, on their backs. They practically robbed him of his childhood. He, he learned nothing along the way except his ABCs and the debatable utility of trekking poles, which he wanted to hold himself in his own little tiny hands, but had to watch other people holding instead. All right, that's sort of fun channeling the internet circa 2018. And you know, it's what people were really saying. What I just did was a little mashup of negative comments. You can go back and look on YouTube, on Reddit, on Facebook, whiteblaze.net. And what happened was, all that internet frenzy became so wild that it exploded out into the real world, the one in which we actually live and hike in, the world in which you can find places like Newfound Gap, which is where, in the real world, at Newfound Gap in the Smoky Mountains, alerted by the internet frenzy, a sheriff and two officials from North Carolina Child Protective Services actually showed up to intercept the Crawfords, and then they separated Ben and Cammie from their six children to determine whether they should allow Ben and Cammie to keep their children. Then, after some interviews were conducted and some forms were filled out, Ben and Cammie were allowed to proceed onward up the Appalachian Trail with their children. And much later, after many, many other challenges along the way, they eventually finished the trail, despite its supposed dangers and despite the certainty of its brutal, soul-crushing distance up mountains, down mountains, up mountains, for as far as their eyes could see. The Crawfords made it all the way up the East Coast to Maine and to Mount Katahdin. And then they became together, as a family, Appalachian Trail through hikers. So too bad, Internet, you were wrong. You were wrong about the Crawfords. And this video is sort of a victory lap on their behalf. From another 2018 AT through hiker, me. And to the Crawfords, and to those of you who supported the Crawfords in comments on their YouTube videos, you were right. And now let's fast forward to 2021, because there's something else to talk about. This book, 2,000 Miles Together, the story of the largest family to hike the Appalachian Trail by Ben Crawford with professional writer Megan McCracken, who helped Ben pull the project together and has an interesting editor's note at the end of the book. So Ben sent me a copy of his book. We're not exactly friends, but we have exchanged emails about the trail in the past, and I was happy to take a look. Not only did I take a look, but I read the entire thing this whole giant tome. And I read it quickly, because it's that kind of book. It tells the inside story of the Crawford's impossible hike, mostly from Ben's point of view, but with many 
excerpts from the kids' trail journals as well. It's a really good story, yes, but it's deep too in some ways. Schooled by the Crawfords, that's me. Here's just one example. When the Crawfords started the trail, they thought they needed to be backpacking it the whole way. That whole man alone in the wilderness idea, which might be great for some long trails, but really isn't in keeping with the spirit of the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Trail isn't about being isolated in the wilderness. Just the opposite, really. A big part of the trail is the way that those who aren't hiking themselves can participate in through hikes by helping through hikers along the way. Trail magic, they call it. And the point isn't whether the through hiker needs or desires to help the trail magic, but whether the through hiker is willing to share their hike with others by accepting the help. I was terrible at this myself. I was hung up, and I'm still kind of hung up, I think, on that whole make it more difficult than it needs to be thing on the doing it all alone, by myself. But the Crawfords learned along the way to share their hike. And despite feeling guilty about it at first, they learned to accept offers of help even when they didn't need them. So they eventually ended up hiking sometimes without full backpacks, ended up staying with strangers overnight in their homes, and they sometimes allowed people to cook for them or help them on the trail including some people who are quite lauded today among the Appalachian Trail community. Uh, Fresh Ground, for example, and Odie of the Hiker Yearbook, the Ultra Shoe Company. There's an entire list of thank yous at the end of the Crawford's book that goes on for four pages. Now, I certainly don't mean to suggest that the Crawfords had an easy time completing the trail. Anything but. Read the book and you'll see what I mean. All the decisions they made, good and bad, are also all there for you to read about and critique if you want. And by the way, Ben's book puts to rest all the discussion about whether the Crawford's thru-hike was just a stunt performed for YouTube. If it had been a stunt, incidentally, it would have been a really moronic way to get attention. Absurd, in fact, because the whole hike was more or less impossible and still would be impossible today except we know they completed it. Two parents, six children. It sort of reminds me of the first through hiker Earl Schaefer, who was also accused of showboating, of engaging in a stunt, because the trail wasn't originally built to be through hiked, such that his task seemed equally impossible even after he'd finished. And if Earl Schaefer had made YouTube videos, you can bet there would still be people complaining today about how he through hiked just to get clicks, or complaining about his supposedly whiny voice or the way he created false deadlines just to make his hike seem more exciting. In the end though, all the comments on the Crawford's YouTube videos, both pro and con, are just a lot of noise. But this book, well, you know, I think a well-written book about the trail will always do a better job at presenting the truth of a through hike than a set of trail videos. And you know, it's books about the trail that continue to be a big part of the reason why certain thru-hikers remain so prominent in our collective memories of the trail. The Earl Schaefers, the Grandma Gatewoods, David Awall Miller, Jennifer Farr Davis, Heather Anderson, and Warren Doyle with his multiple Appalachian Trail thru-hikes and unique ideas about thru-hiking who also happened to write the introduction to the Crawford's book and is as entertaining and cranky as ever. Now, of course, there are other through hiking legends I could add to my list, but I'll let you all complete it yourselves. Leave a comment. But my prediction about the Crawfords? The Crawfords, let's call them by their trail name, the family. The family's achievement will never be surpassed. They'll always be the largest family ever to through hike the Appalachian Trail. And yes, I know, other families have also successfully thru-hiked, and they deserve a lot of credit, too. But the Crawfords, with their six children, I still can't believe they did it. Where can you find the Crawfords now? Well, their book is available on Amazon. Their YouTube channel is Fight For Together. In person, in real life, you might find them on the Appalachian Trail, handing out food, doing trail magic for a new group of thru-hikers. The Crawfords are some pretty big fish 
to get to meet at one of the trail gaps in Georgia on your first through hike. Although I admit the Appalachian Trail community, well, it's a small pond. It's a small pond, but many of us love to swim in it. And if most other people can't draw the basic outline of the Appalachian Trail on a map of the United States, well, that's their problem. It means more room in the pond for us. So, thanks for watching, and consider this book about the Crawford's Hike. Thank you.